I must, for myself, examine the reasons I left the comfort of Kaldahar for a journey to Deepingdale, the place of Isalor's birth. It is much like the assignments given to me by Uncle Oswald and Isalor himself. When Isalor left those lands near the Inner Sea for the spine of the world, he told his fellow druids he would send a student to replace him. This, I told myself, was why I left. But now, as I sit by the warmth of a fire in Mirabar, I realize what Isalor must have already known. I remember the details vividly. It started many years ago. The year was 1310 Dale Reckoning, when scouts from Burn Shander, the largest of the Ten Towns, first reported sighting goblin warbands. Within weeks, a river of goblins had flowed forth from the spine of the world, and above that wave of death sailed a banner bearing the monstrous heads of the Chimera. The militiamen of the Ten Towns would have been the Dale's only defense had the forces of fate been against Burn Shander. But Albrecht Dinsmore, the mayor of the town of Targos, urged the council to send a messenger south to the port cities of Lascan and Neverwinter. Lascan had problems of her own, but fearful of repercussions, the captains of Lascan devised a simple plan. Throughout the city, they posted notices promising wealth and fame. With lean work in the northern port city, many mercenaries and thugs were lured to the ships that would take them even further north. And so their ships crept through the sea of moving ice and on to the Shangarn River. They bragged of the deeds they would perform and the castles they would purchase. Lost in their reverie, they were blind to the throngs of goblins and orcs that lay in wait. Only a few ships survived the assault. Those that continued up the river watched as the town of Bremen burned. One of the ten towns had already fallen. Many wondered, as I often wonder, what difference only a few can make against so many. And in the midst of such terrible circumstances, 